What I like about these conversations isn't that the person I'm talking to has the exact same struggle as me, but that I'm able to think about what they've said and try to adapt it to my own situation. Welcome to Gentle Frog's Bookkeeping Lilypad, your cozy corner of the podcasting world, where numbers tell a story and bookkeeping blossoms into an adventure. My name is Rachel Barnett, and I'm glad you're here. This podcast is for bookkeepers who enjoy authentic, unfiltered, and always encouraging friend to talk shop with. We will be discussing what it's like to own and operate a small bookkeeping business. In this episode, I want to talk to you about having a business sounding board. What is a sounding board? What can it do for you? And what are a handful of places you can go to find your sounding board? I hope you find value in this episode. I encourage you to drop into the Facebook group, Gentle Frogs Bookkeeping Lily Pad, and just let us know if you have a sounding board, if you need a sounding board, and any other ideas you have on the topic. Having a sounding board can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. So this is just going to be me talking about my experiences. Some of the stuff you will have already heard, and some of it will be new. The idea here is just to get your creative juices flowing and let you know what's out there, just in case something resonates with you. Let me start by talking about what value you get from a sounding board. You can have a person that you bounce ideas off of for how to run your business, for things like how to market your business, things such as how to set up and grow, or maybe it's more like, how do I do a particular thing within a client file? Earlier today, I was in Slack talking to one of my friends and she was saying, look, I've got this situation. I'm trying to quote this project. The quoting tool that I'm using comes up with a number that I'm not comfortable with. What should I do? This is all different types of having a sounding board. A sounding board is a person or a collection of people that are just there to help you bounce ideas around. My first sounding board was my SCORE mentor. I've mentioned this before and I'll mention it again. SCORE.org is an amazing resource for small business owners. This is a place a small business owner can go to take classes. This is also a place that small business owners can go to get a mentor to bounce ideas off of. My mentor helped me get a more realistic understanding of how much time I'd spend in my day performing services versus how much time I would spend doing administrative work. My mentor propelled me into teaching classes at SCORE and got me more comfortable with public speaking. Mentors can do a lot of things for you. These are people who have been there and done that, who want to help you learn, grow, and do better. I think of a mentor as less of a pep talk kind of person and more of a take you under their wing and help guide you along kind of person. I wouldn't say that my definition is the only definition. That's just really what I think about in my brain. Similar to a mentor is going to be a coach. There are a variety of types of coaches. There's going to be life coaches and business coaches. And if you've listened to the podcast for a while, you will have heard Wendy Sloniker, an emergence coach. Coaches are really great because they're kind of like a therapist, but not. These are not necessarily people that are going to take you under the wing and shuffle you along and show you the path that they've gone through and they've succeeded by doing. Coaches are going to be people that are going to ask you the questions and help you kind of dig deeper and dive into yourself. Make sure that you feel heard, but make sure you're also working towards your truth and your path. Coaches and therapists both are really great sounding boards. These are people that want to hear you. They want to see you grow and develop and flourish. When I first hired my team many, many years ago, when I very first started hiring people, I hired a leadership coach. I needed to have somebody who wasn't necessarily on the HR side, but rather was on the side of effective communication and making sure the team had what they needed and making sure that I wasn't an annoying boss. That being said, I definitely hired an HR firm as well because I wanted to make sure I didn't miss anything. I didn't want to be the person who let something fall through the cracks because I didn't know what I didn't know. I've participated in group coaching a handful of times and I like it. What I like about group coaching and what I don't like about group coaching is kind of one in the same. For me, I'm a very quiet person. That doesn't come across in the podcast because I'm here by myself. But if you catch me in a group setting, you probably won't hear much out of me, if anything. If I'm hosting it, then yes, I'm going to be talkative and I'm going to make people feel welcome. But if I'm in a setting where I'm a participant, not going to hear so much. What I like about group coaching is that I can be there. I can learn from the benefit and the wisdom of the group, but that I don't have to speak up. 
I don't have to have the spotlight on me. So it's good and bad. One-on-one coaching, I am forced to do the work and participate. Other ways that I have found a sounding board have been to join mastermind groups. I have joined paid mastermind groups as well as facilitated and joined free mastermind groups. I don't think it matters whether you join a free or a paid group. I think what really matters is whether or not the people in the group intend to participate. With one of the groups that I had belonged to, out of the four or five of us, everybody was busy with their things. We met once a month, which in theory would be just fine, but in practice didn't really work. Everybody was so up to their eyeballs in the chaos of their life and their business and all that, that we never really got into a good rhythm. As a group, we didn't get to know each other very well. We really weren't able to help each other strive and move forward and see improvements and provide advice. I now belong to a couple of mastermind groups and they're amazing. Two of them meet once a week. One of them meets twice a month. The groups that meet once a week meet for a shorter amount of time, but I feel like we get more done and more accomplished. What I really like about the groups, the twice a month as well as the once a week, is that I'm very much getting to know the other people in the groups. The other people are getting to know me. The value in this is that when I talk about my struggles and my wins, people remember the stories. They remember the situation of what I had going on. The opposite is true. When other people are speaking and they want to brainstorm or seek advice or just update the group on what's happening within their business, because we meet so frequently and because we interact on Slack and Discord outside of those meetings, we're always really in touch with each other and really aware of what's going on. This is not to say that we're just chatting all day long, getting nothing done. It's more like once or twice a week, there might be a midweek update where somebody's just talking about what's happened within their week or an update on something they were struggling with or just a, a win that's happened in their week. By far, the best thing that I've ever done for myself in terms of finding a sounding board has been to get to know other bookkeepers and really, really get to know them. I joined a local bookkeeping group when I lived in Seattle. I became friends with many of the people in that group. I became very close friends with three of the people in that group. There are now four of us with matching flower tattoos. That's how close we became. We're very lucky to be in business or considering starting our business at this point in the universe, in the year, in the decade, in the whatever you want to call it. We have the advantage of being able to look online and see, are there groups near me? Can I join a group near me? Can I meet up with other business owners that are local to me and perhaps participate in a group lunch or a group coffee meeting? Maybe you're busy and life is chaotic. Fantastic. You can probably find a group that meets online. If you're the kind of person who wants to meet once a week, you can find that. If you want to meet once a month, you can find that. I think the value in having a group is that you have people you can lean on. I want to give you examples of what I lean on my group for. I've created online courses. I've done this for years. So I have leaned on my group to help flush out or think about what the pricing should be. And then also, what kind of extra perks and add-ons should I include for people who sign up for my courses? I was going to say, in the past, I really struggled with how to organize my calendar. But I think we can say I regularly struggle with how to organize my calendar. I am definitely one of those people that will come to my group and say, okay, you guys, I want to do all the things, but I don't have time to do all the things. I want to work on project work, help clients clean up stuff and help Megan with what she's working on. But I also want to provide my training calls. I want to record content for YouTube because I love doing that. I'm doing the podcast too. So like I have to find time to think of topics and then record the sessions on those topics. This is a recurring conversation that I have with my group. We just brainstorm different things that might work. Most recently, one of my friends said every Sunday, she grabs her calendar for the upcoming week and then looks at her Asana task list. She'll use a color-coded weekly planner and just identify what stuff she's going to work on. She doesn't overcomplicate it. She'll use a color for personal and just say medical and errands and whatever. And she'll use a color for business. And instead of writing down every single thing that she's going to do, she might just write down client work, ABC client, and then she knows she has our task list. What I like about these conversations isn't that the person I'm talking to has the exact same struggle as me, but that I'm able to think about what they've said and try to adapt it to my own situation. 
So when she said, I look at my schedule on Sunday night and I make a very loose, comfortable outline with plenty of wiggle room, then I know I can stay focused during the week. I'm looking at that going, this is great. I could totally do that. I can just write out on Sunday night, this is the day that I'm going to do my YouTube videos. This is the day I'm going to do course content because I'm creating more stuff for courses. Another really good example of something where I lean on my sounding boards is when I put out a proposal for work. We've all had this situation where you put out a proposal, you don't hear back from the client, so you send a follow-up and maybe you send a second follow-up and then you don't really know, should you send more follow-ups? Should you let it freeze the follow-up? It's not the sort of thing that you can just have prescribed or a, a templated email that works for all situations. At least if you're me, you need to be able to describe, here's my conversation with the client, here's the proposal I sent, and here's the vibe that I felt. And it's that brainstorming piece where you need to talk it through with someone else and have that person give you feedback based on their experience, but also based on knowing you. My sounding board and the people that I talk to regularly, they know me, they hear the inflections in my voice, they know to ask me, am I excited to do this thing because I really want to do the thing or am I excited to do the thing because somehow I've got it in my head that this is a thing that I must do? Along a similar line, I had a conversation with my therapist the other day. I said, I presented with an opportunity and I'm considering, do I, don't I, how do I approach this? And she said, you know what? It's fine. She asked me to think about which path is going to be better for my mental health. She asked me which path is going to be more aligned with my values. Because when I get frustrated, she asks me why I'm frustrated and I explain it. And then she brings it down to values. And she's like, oh, it sounds like you're really bothered by this thing, which is dishonest or not forthright or not in the spirit of giving. And I'm like, well, yeah. (laughs) So she reminded me that if I do something different than I had planned on doing earlier in the week or whatever, that it is I identify my goals and my path to get to the goals, that path is not set in stone. You might find yourself thinking the same thing. I know where I am today. I know where I want to go loosely. And I have decided my path to get there. The thing that she encouraged me to think about was that there isn't always just one right path. That You can take a different path or you can take a shortcut. For me, I find it incredibly helpful to have a sounding board. As you've heard, most of the time I use my sounding board as a resource to talk about things related to business. Here's where I'm at my business. Here's where I want to go. How can I get there? Here's what I'm struggling with. What do you think? A lot of what I've described is sounding boards and people within my industry. I don't want to discredit having somebody in a different industry can still be incredibly valuable. I feel silly if we're not remembering, but we're going to say more than five years ago and less than 10 years ago, I made a friend while working in a co-working office. I had rented an office at a WeWork space. It was a large office with a dedicated desk. Myself and another guy were the only two people in the office. Just by proximity, we ended up getting to know each other and became friends. I'm incredibly, incredibly thankful for my friendship with him. This is a person who has no team, no desire to have a team, has some idea on how his bookkeeping works, but is not a bookkeeper. He's a creative professional. If there's a thing that needs to get done in Photoshop, he's all over it. If the thing that needs to get done in QuickBooks... He's looking at me like, can I just ask you to help? We shared an office for a number of years and it was fantastic. Our office was the office with the coolest decorations because he's a creative person. Because he's a creative person, when I needed to talk through things and have a sounding board, I wasn't talking to somebody who views the world through the same lens that I use. I was talking to somebody who views the world completely differently, but also had no problem giving it to me straight. This is not a sugarcoating kind of guy. This is a to the point, you're bonkers, you need to hear this. Have you even thought about X, Y, and Z? I'm grateful for the sounding boards I have now and for all the sounding boards I've had in the past. I'm grateful anytime somebody reaches out to me and says, hey, can I run something by you? I just need a sounding board. I want to give back for all those times that people have given to me. I've had so many people lend so many ears that I'm always available to give back. Out of all the sounding boards I've had over the last 10 or 12 years, I would say my favorite 
has been my local bookkeeping group. This is pre-pandemic, so it's an unfair comparison, but it was incredibly nice. I would host a monthly meetup. We would get together at a place, get breakfast. Whoever could show up would show up. And I just got to know people. It was very informal. It was very casual. We talked shop, but nobody was obligated to talk. Nobody was there to present or teach. It was just a bunch of like-minded people who wanted to talk and support and care for each other. I host a group on Facebook called Bookkeeper Business Besties. If you'd like to join, please just click the join button. I'll look and make sure you're a bookkeeper and I'll approve you. I don't moderate. I don't facilitate. I don't babysit. It is literally just a private group for people who want to find their business bestie or besties plural. This is going to be a place to find a sounding board. I'm curious to hear from you guys. If you have a sounding board, where did you find them? If you have a group coach that you like, where did you find them? If you're looking for a sounding board or a coaching situation, let us know in the Facebook group, General Frogs Bookkeeping Lilypad. What are you looking for? It belonged to way more groups than I wanted to list on this podcast. Otherwise, it would just be me reading from a list. I'm more than happy to recommend anything that I belong to now or have belonged to in the past that might be valuable. I want to hear from you. I want to know what you love and what you need. If you need something and I might have a recommendation for it, I'm all in. I'll gladly recommend anything that I've done in the past or that I currently do if I think it can help you. Thanks and have a great day.